We begin this week with a history-making launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It was there aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that a multinational crew blasted off for the International Space Station. Anna Kikina became the first Russian cosmonaut in two decades to launch from American soil and Russia's first to hitch a ride with SpaceX. On the same flight, Marine Colonel Nicole Mann became the first Native American woman launched into orbit. The operation comes amid ongoing tensions between the United States and Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. But agency officials expressed optimism about continued collaboration in space despite Russia's publicly stated plans to build its own outpost. We start to cooperate, as I said, uh, many years ago, more than 40 years ago, and we will continue our cooperation uh, as long as I can imagine. As we extend Space Station, get partner across the board agreement to extend past 24, we would also extend the agreement as our goal. The crew also included NASA's Josh Kasada and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. On the same day that it carried a crew to the ISS, SpaceX launched another batch of its Starlink global broadband satellites from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. After 52 satellites went into orbit, the Falcon 9 booster landed on the deck of the drone ship affectionately named, Of Course I Still Love You. Meanwhile, in Kuwait, the team that designed the country's first nano-satellite says it's almost ready for launch. Kuwait Sat-1 is a small satellite designed to gather information on the country's environment. The team says the device will monitor pollution in coastal areas and help with planning for urban expansion. If it passes standard checks, Kuwait Sat-1 will blast off aboard a SpaceX rocket by the end of the year. Also this week, a rover that seemed destined for Mars until NASA had a change of heart may have a purpose after all. The Sample Fetch rover prototype, or SFR for short, comes from aerospace giant Airbus. NASA determined its Perseverance rover could collect samples just fine, leaving the SFR with no mission on Mars. But designers say the SFR can be just as useful elsewhere. The teams behind the rovers say the same skills learned in building it can transfer to collecting samples on the moon, underground infrastructure projects on Earth, and yes, a future trip to Mars. And liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion-mile trek to Saturn. Finally, it was this week in 1997 that NASA delighted its own mission control by successfully launching the Cassini spacecraft to Saturn. It wasn't until 2004 that Cassini reached Saturn's orbit, where it spent 13 years exploring the ringed planet before plunging into the gas planet's atmosphere in 2017. Arash Arbasadi, VOA News.